Hey everyone, Steve here. Let's learn how to play math rock. Oh, Jesus Christ. All joking aside, in this lesson I aim to teach you a few basics of math rock for guitar. Uh, this lesson would be great if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to write your own kind of mathy ideas. To do this, I put a bunch of mathy style exercises together for you. I recommend that you know your basics, such as uh, counting simple rhythms, know what a major key is, and the notes of C major will help for this lesson, and know what chords we can build from each note within a major key, so either major, minor, or diminished. If you don't, it's okay. Uh, just follow along, follow along with the lesson, and let me know how you get on. We will be in standard tuning for this lesson, but everything that I show you uh, can also be applied to alternative tunings or open tunings, however you want to refer to them. It's worth mentioning before we get stuck in that math rock as a genre, if, if we could call it a genre, is so diverse that I couldn't possibly cover everything in one lesson. So this lesson is just aimed at the uh, basics and uh, for beginners. And if you are interested in learning a bit more about math rock and its origins or what exactly math rock music is, then I did make a video of that recently and I'll throw a link in the description for you so you can go and check that out if you want. Let's get into the lesson, so grab your guitar and follow along. The structure of this lesson as it follows. First we'll learn some mathy style chords and then we'll take these chords and we'll try to make them into some kind of mathy style rhythms. And then lastly we'll look a bit at uh, odd time signatures and compound type signatures. And with these three things, chords, rhythm and timing, uh, hopefully we'll have this short little uh, compact guide that we can use for creating our own mathy ideas. Well that's the aim I have anyway, so hopefully we'll, we will get there. So first, let's talk about chords. A staple of math rock and its subgenres and similar genres, let's say like Midwest Emo, for example, um, when we're talking about chords, you'll usually hear a lot of um, extended chords and altered chords. So what I mean by extended chords is where we're taking a, a basic triad of three notes and then we're adding extra notes on top. And this gives kind of a you know, jazzy sound and Altered chords is where we are playing stuff like um, you know, like sus2 or sus4, where the third degree has been omitted. Um, don't worry too much if you don't understand, I'll try and explain a bit more about that. As this is a beginner's lesson, I'm just going to stick to looking at extended chords and not really touch upon altered chords. It's worth pointing out I'm being quite general here. Um, not every mathy style band uses extended or altered chords, but a great majority of them do, so that's why I've included them for this lesson. So a quick bit of theory to explain uh, what extended chords are. So let's choose the key of C major. There are zero sharps or flats in C major, and we have seven notes, as you can see here. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. From each note, we can build the basic triad to make a chord, and each triad has three notes in it. From notes one, four, and five, so C, F, and G, we can build major triads. And from two, three, and six, we can build minor triads. And from the seventh degree, the B, we build a diminished triad. And we can use Roman numerals to denote this. So uppercase, so one, four, and five, this denotes major. And lowercase, two, three, six, and seven, this denotes minor or diminished. So how do we make extended chords? So what we're doing is we're adding notes to these basic triads. So let's take, for example, let's change all of our basic triads to seventh chords. And here you can see we have four notes instead of three. And this is what I mean by extended chords. And then we can add, you know, more notes to these triads and they become like, you know, nines, then elevens, then thirteens. So you may be wondering, um, which chords should I use from all these seven notes, right? We've got potentially seven chords there. So again, speaking generally, uh, a lot of math rock isn't that harmonically complex. So you find that they use um, a lot of chords that are used in popular music, such as one, two, four, and six degrees. Um, however, in popular music, you hear the fifth degree a lot more. But when we extend uh, the fifth degree, it becomes a dominant chord, which can sound out sound a little bit out of place in math rock. So let's say we play a E minor nine. 
they sound really jazzy but more in the genre of jazz and blues and not really in math rock so that's why they tend to be avoided in math rock so let's keep it simple so for this lesson let's use extended chords built from the first second fourth and sixth degrees of c major the extended chords i've chosen are all um, nine chords so we have major and minor nine extended chords so these chords are c major nine D minor 9, F major 9, and A minor 9. So take, you, take a moment to familiarize yourself and learn those chords before we move on. So you can pause the video if you like. So now we have these four. So they have that kind of uncertainty to them, you know, like that major minor feel. Uh, so that's why I think they work very well in math rock. So now we have these four chords. We can look at uh, taking these four chords and trying to make some kind of mathy idea. So this takes us into the second section where we will look at rhythm. So here we go. Uh, so leaving melody creation aside for this lesson, we will just concentrate on harmony uh, using our chords and we'll make some kind of mathy style rhythms. Um, so arguably rhythm coupled with different time signatures is what gives math rock that kind of complex feel. You know, if you have a conversation about what is math rock to someone, you usually find that you use these kind of words like, you know, you have some kind of angular rhythms and odd time signatures, right? And um, angular rhythms are prominent throughout many math bands. Um, this is usually achieved via syncopation, where beats other than the main beats of a, a bar are emphasized. If you check out bands like Meet Me in St. Louis, Shapes, Terra Mellis, Delta Sleep, you'll get some good examples of this. So I'll play a quick example to show you what I mean. So I'll just set up my metronome. Um, this is a part from a Meet Me in St. Louis song called All We Need is a Little Energon and a Lot of Look. And it's a good example of what I mean by these angular rhythms. So let's listen to that. So there's a quick example of an uh, angular rhythm. A uh, pretty cool idea there, eh? So let's take the chords that we learnt and let's start creating some mafia rhythms of our own. So let's start simple and let's shift between two chords. Remember we want some kind of angular rhythms and a good way to do this is to use syncopation. A really basic example of this would be, let's say we had a beat in 4-4 four, four, and the main beats were beats 2 and 4. So if we wanted to use syncopation then let's say simply we could do emphasize beats 1 and 2 instead of going beats two and four, and this would give us a syncopated feel. It's a rather simple example, but that's what it is at its basic level. So arguably for math rock, we need something a bit less simpler than that, right? So in the first exercise, I've kept it simple, and we'll be switching between the F major nine and the A minor nine. And it's the same rhythm for both bars. So the beats will be falling on beats one, two, and the and of free. So let me show you an example of this playing along with the metronome. So it's like one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So it's coming on the beats one, two, and the and of three there. Uh, so have a crack at it. Uh, it's fairly simple, so it shouldn't take you so long to get it. Um, uh, please practice it slow first and um, build up the speed slowly as you're comfortable with it. And make sure you got the uh, changes between the chords as cleanly as possible as well. So on to the second example. I've taken inspiration from the Meet Me in St. Louis example by just using intervals instead of the full chord shapes. So the F major 9 chord... <laughs> Uh, we have removed two notes, these two notes, and we're going to be playing uh, the strings. We're still going to be playing them two strings, but they're going to be muted. So what's important here for this example is that is you only hear 
uh, this interval, these two notes, and you're not getting any ringing notes, and you're getting the, the chug of the strings in between. Like that. So you can practice here using um, the fingers that you're not using to fret to mute the strings. It, um, it may feel a bit weird at first if you've not tried to do that before, uh, but give it time and it becomes second nature to you and you won't even realize you're doing it, so that would be great. This exercise introduces changing between a few simple rhythms uh, to get you used to the feeling of changing uh, between some rhythms. The first two bars are the same rhythm as the previous previous example and um, let me get the metronome set again and I'll play along for you. There's that one. Um, the rhythms are fairly simple, but it might keep you on your toes at first, um, anticipating where the rhythm changes. So again, like the first example, just take it slowly with the metronome, and then just build up speed as you go along. And remember to try and keep it um, as clean as possible there. For the third exercise, I've kept the same initial rhythm as the other two exercises, uh, but this time I've applied it to a new idea. Uh, so that idea being using the same notes from one chord. So as you can see here, if you look at the tab, um, I've used the F major 9, but I've separated the chord into intervals. So we got this one, and this one, and... So this is a handy little idea you can do, it's just use the notes within the same chord, like a, kind of like an arpeggio. So you don't really have to think of any new ideas because the, um, the tools that you need are already there. So the aim of this exercise was to get you uh, playing the same rhythm but changing the finger positions that we're playing. So let's take a listen to this one. <laughs> Have a crack at that one and see how you get on. Like the other two exercises we did, so take it slowly at first and build up the speed. And for the last exercise in the rhythm section, uh, we're going to use all of the chord shapes with a new rhythmic idea. Uh, I applied the same interval idea as the F major 9 chord uh, to all the other shapes. So as you can see here on the tab, we have... Um, the four intervals there. So before we practice the exercise, uh, familiarize yourself and get used to changing between these four shapes. So I recommend using your index and your middle, and then going to your ring and middle finger. The same again here. You find it's easier than playing it like that. And also, if you don't want to use the intervals, you can play it all as full chords. But it might be more challenging that way. That's fun to do. Yeah, up to you. So, uh, here's the exercise. Yeah, so there's that example. I really like that little rhythmic idea. I think it sounds quite cool. So again, as with the other three exercises, take it slowly at first and build up your speed. Uh, so there's all four exercises for you. Uh, I know some of them can be quite simple, but again, they're meant to be as a serve as a you know introduction into playing um, math rock kind of rhythms. So you can take these initial ideas I've given you, and you can make them your own, and you can take them away and craft them into whatever rhythms you want to do as well. And you can use all four of those chords and start to learn some other shapes. And you can also start to apply this to melody as well. So that's a whole other ballpark there. Um, a cool thing in math rock is the you know rhythmic interplay between various band members, right? Between drummers and guitarists. Or one my one of my favorites is you know, two guitars. So one would be like you know do 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 something like that, where uh, one guitar is playing this rhythmic feature and another one's playing this, and the way they interplay with each other sounds really really cool. And you can hear this um, like in bands like Color and uh, Delta Sleep do that as well. And there's probably loads more, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. I think Meet Me in St. Louis again, I think they do that as well. 
So the keen eye audience member here may have noticed that that last exercise we just looked at was in 5-4 time. And I did that on purpose so we can now branch into the last segment of this lesson which will touch upon time signatures. So arguably another infamous part of MathRock, like I said earlier, is time signatures. This is something that again always crops up in conversation when talking about MathRock. However, that being said, a lot of math rock is actually in fact in simple time, like 4-4. Four, four. It's usually just the angular rhythms that give it that feeling of odd timing. So in this section, we'll touch upon compound time signatures and odd time signatures. So compound time is when beats in a bar are divided into groups of threes or sixes or nines, for example. So think like 6-8 or 9-8, as you can see here, the way they're grouped, they're beamed together. Odd time signatures, on the other hand, contain both elements of simple and compound time note groupings. So you can see here in 5-4 uh, in that we have you know, six notes and four notes grouped together. So you can see here the 5-4 note grouping, we have that compound of circled in red and um, that simple time, again, you know, four notes grouped together. They may seem a little daunting at first if you're not used to them, but as long as you practice them, uh, they'll soon become familiar to you, so don't worry so much about that. And we're going to practice a few now anyway to give you some kind of introduction to playing in compound and odd time signatures. So for these exercises, I'll show you two approaches to writing in odd and compound time signatures, or both. Uh, the first method is to grab your metronome and then set it to a particular time signature and then start trying to play something in that time signature. So this is great for getting used to the feel of a certain time signature, but it does have some drawbacks, like you can get stuck of, you know, trying too much to write in that time signature and not really thinking about, you know, what you should actually play or how you can branch out into other time signatures. And you might least lose the feel of like, what is you, what you want to play and what your music is. But put that aside, it's, um, you know, really good, way of learning how the time signature feels. So let's take the time signature of 5-4 and let's play our, um, our C major 9 chord on each beat of the bar. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and you can do that and then you can start to switch between the chords. So you could have like get you help you get used to the feeling of the timing and also where the changes are uh, in each bar as well so the first exercise we'll do is in 5-4 and I've extended that idea I just told you about there <laughs> If you can't play it as arpeggios, it's completely fine just to hold the chord and play it that way instead. You might find that's a bit easier at first. And like the initial idea, um, this exercise will help you get used to the, the changes in 5-4 and how long a bar feels in 5-4. And as you become familiar with playing this arpeggios and the feeling of 5-4, then I'll give you an example of what you could do. You could start to branch into different rhythms, so something like this. So that's using the same uh, um, notes of the arpeggios there, but the rhythmic idea has changed a little. So I just wanted to show you what you can actually do with these initial ideas. So the second exercise I have for you is in 5-8, and it has a nice little mathy feel for you. So like the earlier examples with the intervals, I have a F major 9, D minor 9, and a and an A minor 9, um, some intervals there for you. It sounds like this. So it has a much more hurried pace to it, but the actual chords are quite um, laid back compared to the d -d 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 rhythm that's going underneath it, right? So that rhythm is like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. 
uh, he like you like that <laughs> but you probably don't want to count that out loud just try and count that in your head but if it does help then count out loud why not so there's a few things we can do to get you on the road of getting familiar with playing in different rhythms. So remember you can um, put your metronome into like 6, 8, and 9, 8, stuff like this to get used to compound times too. And things like uh, 7, 8 and 7, 4 as well. And uh, feel free to experiment as much as you want in these time signatures where you're chucking the beats. Uh, it's a good way of learning uh, what really works and what really doesn't work. So onto the second way of approaching different time signatures. I wanted to show you when we have something already written and we feel like it needs a bit of a change. It's a bit boring or for whatever reason we want to uh, change it a little and we want to try and branch into some kind of odd time signature, some different time signatures. And um, the way we can do this is this is what I like to do is we can purposefully shorten or lengthen uh, a particular idea and nine times out of ten this will branch into some kind of odd time signature as long as the initial idea was already in a, a simple time signature let's say. And Unlike the setting, the metronome example, this can sound more like you because it's your ideas that you crafted and then you're purposefully trying to take them in new directions. For my first exercise of this, I wanted to give you a simple example of what I mean by shortening or lengthening. And for this exercise, it was a shortening idea. So for the initial idea I had, it was very simple. It was just playing a chord on each beat in 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> What's wrong with that but we can spice it up a bit right so if I purposefully shorten each bar then hopefully we'll branch into our timing so let's take a listen to how the idea turned out <laughs> you can see there that by shortening the last chord of each bar I branched into 7-4 times and also when we came to that second chord it made us uh, syncopate, uh, syncopate as well so we're on the off beat. And we go back to the off beat there again. So that's an example of what I mean by shortening our idea. The second and last exercise that I'll do for timing is a bit of both. So we're going to look at doing shortening and lengthening an idea uh, to give us some kind of odd time and also some compound time signatures too. So this, let's listen to the initial idea first. <laughs> there's the initial idea there. There's nothing much wrong with it, right? Um, I actually like it. But if we want to branch into some kind of um, different time signatures, then we can purposefully mess around with each bar and we can lengthen and shorten it. And we can also mess around with um, different rhythms and also changing uh, what intervals we're using. So there I'm just using the major and minor intervals. <laughs> but we can start to incorporate all of the notes from the chords. So that's what I did for the final exercise, and let's take a listen to that. change there has a nice bouncy feel to it and a different rhythmic feel and definitely sounds a bit more mathy so I do like both actually so the simple one and changing it um, so we did branch into 9 8 7 8 and 6 8 time there so that was quite nice so there we have it it's a beginner's introduction to playing and writing some math rock ideas on our guitar um, I hope you were able to follow along and get some good ideas from this guide that I put together. Uh, all together by just thinking about you know, what chords we can use and what rhythm we can apply and what timing we can apply that rhythm in. We can create some kind of our own mafia ideas. Uh, this is just one way of many, but I think it's quite a good solid introduction on how to actually craft some kind of mafia ideas.
please leave any questions, criticisms or feedback uh, below and I'll get back to you ASAP. Uh, any feedback that you do give me does help me create better content for you. So it's good to be honest, but uh, maybe not brutally honest. Uh, it might hurt my feelings. And all of the materials that you see in this lesson, so all the tabs and stuff, will be over on my webpage that I have. And again, the link will be in the description for that. And if you would like a guitar profile of all the examples and exercises, then you can head over to my Patreon page. If you pledge some patronage, then you'll be able to get access to all of the guitar profiles that I use in all of my lessons. So I hope you do find it useful, as I said. Uh, I did put quite a bit of effort in, and it takes a bit of thought to, you know, how to approach this, um, you know, as a beginner, a beginner of math rock. So I hope I've given it a good for introduction there. And yeah, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.